All right, Dave Schultz back at the uh, Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana at the 2018 Sunbelt Media Days, powered by Pete's, exclusively on Acadiana Sports Station, 1037 The Game, 1037thegame.com. We're here with Steve Shaw. He oversees the officials for, well, I guess the SEC and the Sunbelt. How, how does that work? That's a lot of officials. It is a lot of officials, but it's really uh, a good program. We we treat all the officials the same. We evaluate them the same. Uh, they get the same film grading. They get the same training. And uh, it's really been excellent. Uh, I, I think the two conferences blend together and footprint very well. Uh, it helps us recruit both conferences. And, uh, it, you know, it gives us an opportunity to to train some guys, bring them up in the program. And, uh, you know, it, it's been a win-win for both the Sun Belt and the SEC. All right. Any new rules for this year? <laughs> we, we've got a lot. Uh, probably a lot. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, so, uh, but there's only a few that'll be recognizable to the fans. I, I think the one that's probably gotten the most buzz is the new kickoff rule. So now, uh, and, and this is a player safety issue. We, we, we see that the kickoff play is the most dangerous play that we have in our game. However, the data shows that touchback plays, the injury rate goes way down. So we a few years ago made a change where we moved the kickoff line back from the 30 to the 35 and incented the receivers with a touchback to the 25. And so the year we did that, uh, touchbacks went from about 19% to 39%. So it was very successful, but now we're starting to see, you know, people putting athletes on their cover team, good kicker, you know, drop it in. So we're going to give the receiving team an opportunity to call for and make a fair catch. And if they do that, then the ball will belong to them at the 25, just like a touchback. So You know, that corner kick, they can now make that fair catch and get the ball at the 25. Do you see a time where maybe the uh, the kickoff is eliminated from football? Well, you know, I know there's a lot of speculation to that. Uh, The kickoff play is such an integral play in the game. Um, You know, think of all the games you've seen with a big return or a surprise onside kick. So... You know, and and even our nomenclature, you know, what time, what's kickoff time? But uh, we have to make it a safer play to keep it. And and, and I will tell you, the rules committee and the coaches have really come full circle. You know, a few years ago, they just wanted to protect the kickoff. But now the coaches are becoming part of the solution. This idea came from special teams coaches. and, uh, And we've got more changes that we can make to keep working to make it a safer play. I think the rules committee said, let's make one singular change this year this this uh, fair catch rule and then we can measure you know what did it do to touchbacks what did it do to the injury rate and then see where we are talking to steve shaw overseas officials for the sec and uh, the Sun Belt. you say what the touchback rate was and how that went up what about the penalty rate because it does seem like it, it or more than two-thirds of kickoffs and punts seem to have a penalty called on them. Well, it, it feels that way, right. but uh, they're not. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the plays where you have the most likelihood of blocks in the back. You know, and people say, why are there so many blocks in the back today? You know, well, back in the day, before you could extend your hands uh, in blocking, it was kind of hard to hit the guy in the back. But now with extended hands, it's, it's too uh, tempting and easy to, to give him a push. So, uh, But uh, I think I, I think the the goal on kickoffs uh, is to make it a safer play, and I think this will do that. Talking to Steve Shaw, head of officials for the Sun Belt and the SEC. All right, how about last year? We call it the Nick Saban rule, where you basically could not leave the bench and argue with the coach. Was that? I mean, we shocked. I think Nick Saban didn't get a penalty. Anybody get a penalty in the SEC or, or the Sun Belt last year with that new rule? Well, we had a few. Um, uh, More on assistant coaches, surprisingly, than on head coaches. But the rule did exactly what we wanted it to do. And and it was no secret. We started communicating it in the spring to our head coaches, uh, letting them know. And and it didn't mean that they can't still have that good – conversation with that official just don't come out into the field of play so uh so we had a few but but shockingly and and the the coaches that everybody said immediately would get them really check their behavior and so uh the rule worked just as we wanted it to uh cleaned up the sideline and i appreciate the coaches for doing what they did did the referees give them warnings, or was it almost immediately when they would get these penalties? And were there, was there any penalties like in the in the with the game in the balance? Well, there were none with the game in the balance, which is which is most important. Uh, but we did not give them warning, and that's what held the rule together. You know, if we'd have given them warning or given them once or twice, then it really wouldn't have had the teeth. But but we told them up front. 
if you come out, if your feet are in the green grass and you're debating an officiating decision, it's going to be a 15-yard penalty, and that's your decision to do. And the coach has really adapted to it well. Anyone get more than one penalty? Um, no. And, uh, and, and that was the other concern because now, as we know, it's, it's been this way for a long time. If players get too unsportsmanlike, they're disqualified. But we made the change with the head coaches. If you get too, uh, they were disqualified. But really, shockingly, very few head coaches got the penalty. Talking to Steve Shaw, head of uh, SEC officials and Sunbelt officials, uh, one of the big controversial rules is, is the targeting rule. And it does not seem that there seems to be one set of guidelines. It seems to be so individualistic where, you know, you get a good hit, but the receiver doesn't see it coming and his head snaps. But it was a good hit. But because it didn't look good, uh, the reaction to the guy getting hit, um, then you lose a player. And that could be, you know, it could be for half a game in one game. It could be for half of the next game. Uh, has, any been, has anything been done to clear up the targeting rule? Well, so the the one thing we've done, we've really worked to be consistent on it. And, um, you know, now every targeting foul is, is it goes through replay for an evaluation. Um, I, I would tell you that I understand the fans' concern. You don't ever want to lose a player. You know, obviously the most precious commodity players is playing time. But... It is well. I would. I would. I would also say I'm. I'm. I'm probably more concerned with the player's safety uh, than others. And when it's helmet to helmet, I get it. All right. But when it seems like you know someone didn't get his head turned around fast enough because the linebacker was in really good spot to make a play, and he goes down awkwardly, and it, it looks worse than it actually is, then sometimes that's when they get thrown out of the game. Yep. Well, so here's where we are, and, and I'm with you on the player safety component. We have got to get the head out of the game. Um, there's just no way around it. Um, there, our game is under attack from so many different directions, and it'll still be a great physical game if you get the head out. Um, there was an NFL statistic, and, and to me, this is probably the best statistic that I've heard uh, and for the future of our game. They went back last year and kind of went through the anatomy of every concussion that they had. What they found that there was not one concussion when a player had his head up and, and even hit with the face mask. Um, so it's the action of ducking your head, you know, launching um, and, and trying to make that sports center hit. You know, and, and like you talked about, a blindside block now, and that's why the targeting fouls are up. We've added over time more defenseless players, if you will, the sliding quarterback, a blindside hit. And so if you've got a blindside opportunity, it doesn't mean you can't block that player. You just have to stay off their head. But I will tell you, there was a lot of discussion in the rules committee around making a blindside hit uh, where you had to do it uh, in a way that was less physical. Because what we see on these blindside hits, I mean, we all want a great game, but a lot of times these guys size them up, come in and just try to, you know, declete them in, in the in the their lexicon. And and so, you know, those type blocks could be effectively a screen block or a, a shove like you get, you know, with extended hands would be as effective. You know, it just wouldn't get the ooh factor. So those are the type things that that we have to do. And I will tell you, um, and starting with our commissioner, Commissioner Benson, um, you know, the rule book says when in question it's a foul you know and and so we want the officials to put their marker down let replay uh take a look at it but i would tell you the commissioners as a group will say if we get a player disqualified on the margin we'll accept that for the long-term health and safety of the players and our game and so you know there's a clear message to the players you know don't lead with your head get the head out of the game all right got about a minute let's wrap it up here with uh Overseas official Steve Shaw with the Sun Belt and the SEC. Quickly, you use the same lines that Larry Fedor did. Do you believe there's a correlation between concussions and CTE? Because he clearly does not. So I would tell you I'm not a medical doctor. Um, here's what I do know. Uh, high head hits are not good. Now, I don't know what all that means. I just know they're not good. And what we've got to do is get it out of the game. And I'm telling you, I've watched enough film and our players are making progress. I mean, versus five, six years ago, it is incredible progress. You don't see the big launch, the free safety, you know, roaming the field, launching and hitting people. So we have got to keep working um, to get the head out, and that'll make it safer and a better game. 
All right, Steve Shaw, we saw you in Atlanta. We appreciate you coming to New Orleans. Thank you so much. Steve Shaw, head of officials for the Sun Belt and the SEC. Enjoy the day. Thank you very much. All right, back after this, we got Phil Steele coming up on Acadiana Sports Station. 1037 The Game and 1037thegame.com.